to. Thank you, Phil. And now we're talking to Wayne Collins over in Pittsfield. Wayne, how are you over there? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Glendora? <laughs> Excellent, thanks. Uh, tell us what we spent in September. Yes. <clears throat> you um, pretty much spent everything that you were allotted for September, <laughs> as I recall. But I have to give you the figures here. For September, <clears throat> uh, your income uh, from your pension check was uh, $857. Buffalo News. Yes. And then... Um, the uh, Social Security was 1757 Thank you, U.S. government. And then your smaller check was $38. Thank you, uh, Gannett Newspapers. Yes, so that was a total of $2,652. Oh, thank you. Let's round that off, folks, to $2,700. All right. And I want to give you your final figures here as well. For your business for the month, you spent $2,057. $2,000 for the month, uh-huh. And your personal expenses came to 599 So we spent 20, total spent was how much, Wayne? 2656 Well, that's pretty close to 2700 isn't it? And that's what you said. Yes. Uh, so you went under... Four dollars. You were four dollars in the red for the month. Oh my goodness. So that was uh, pretty close. Now, you, technical equipment, you spent two hundred thirty-six dollars. Two hundred thirty-six dollars on cameras and SD cards. That's right. Your, Batteries. Mm -hmm. Your non-employee compensation was six. $121. Non-employee compensation, that would be Phil. Mm -hmm. and How much was Phil? Yes. How much was Phil, non-employee compensation? Well, I, I can't tell you offhand because I'm looking. All right. What was the total for NEC? 621 Thank you. That would all be Phil. Mm -hmm. And your postage was $62. $62 postage. Telephone was 420 Wow. Why? Telephone there, so I think that had some. Why? That's way off. I don't understand that. Okay, telephone, 400 Yes, because you bought one or more telephones during the month, I believe. And then for gas, gasoline was $72. Now, I have cars for zero, but I, I believe you don't have the cars anymore, so... Uh, Move on. Then you had one time only business was zero. One time only business zero. Office rent three hundred. Office rent three hundred. Medical was zero. Medical was zero. You hear that, folks? Ninety-four years old, no doctors and no medicine, dental and vegan. Was, yes, dental was zero. What was zero? Dental. Dental. Good. You spent nothing on dental all year. Yeah. Donations received $60. Electricity for business was zero. Thank you, Heap. Thank you, Heap. Thank you, Karen. Your museum was $102. And, of course, your total rent for the month is 400 For print, it was zero. Print for zero. The total rent is 400 That's an amazing figure, isn't it? In this day and age, when the lowest you can get is about 800 Oh, yes. Print was zero. Consolidated internet, zero. Uh, that is for Madeline. I pay her internet, and she reads me my email. Okay, but there was none this month. And then bank fee was $128. What would that be? Money orders, huh? Yes, that and for the administration of the trust. Oh, yeah, the, admin, the trust charged me $120, and they're way behind. Yes. Poor Phil. Phil, what was the last payment you got from the trust? Uh, I don't know. It was a stack of checks. Okay, go ahead, uh, Wayne. Okay, airtime was zero. Uh-huh. Office supplies, $36, and high-speed internet was $20. There you are. 
Okay, now for your personal expenses, your groceries for the personal month. folks. This is personal expenses. Yes, your groceries were two hundred three dollars for the month. Two hundred and three. Yes. And in addition to that, I have a food card. Yes. Huh. Okay. Okay, because uh, the groceries have gotten to be very expensive, so uh, this is not going to be a low expenditure. Household, $53. Laundry, $10. Electricity, personal, was zero. For clothes, you spent zero. And the personal part of your rent was $100. Well, thank you, Wayne. Well, you're welcome. Your health and beauty aids would be $26. Well, that would be Pond's cold cream, folks. That's right. Gifts for the month were $207. $207 in gifts? Yes. And oh, well, that's nice. Yes. And one time only personal is zero. And I keep a, a separate listing. And this is not included under the expenses because they've already been included. And for the vegetarian club, you spent $9 for the month. Okay, thank you. So that rounds out your expenses for the month of September. You are so kind to keep those books, Wayne. Thank you oh, so much. You're welcome. Did it tire you all out there? Oh, no, no. Now, did you and Ralph go to the uh, Athenaeum, the Berkshire, the, the Pittsfield Library, and have a tutorial on the computer? Yes. Tell us about it. Well, it was what you would do if you wanted to set up an email. And... Of course, I don't absorb it all because I'm not very tech savvy. Well, you don't have an email for the first place. No, no. But I wanted to know what it was like. So I did um, learn some things about it. And um, and were you and Ralph the only two there? Yes. Mm -hmm. And how long did it last? About an hour. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's much more generous than they give here. It's only half an hour, Wayne. I think it ran over a little more than an hour. Well, that's good. It kept up your interest. Did Ralph get a lot of a, out of it? Oh, yes, I think so. And Isn't that wonderful? And it was free, right? Yes. Now, how did you hear about it? I uh, was told by the head librarian the reference department that this would be coming up and that I might find it interesting. And when did she tell you that? Oh, a couple of months ago. I took it another session last month, and it's... Uh, oh, is it on a specific day? Yes. Oh, what day of the week and month is it? It changes every month. Oh, okay. Now, folks, I'm trying to summarize this for you people in Pittsfield, Berkshire County. The library has a tutorial on uh, computers, how to operate computers. And it's every month, Wayne? Yes, I think it... I don't know how many months it goes, but anyway. Um, it's every month, right? As far as I know, I don't know how many months. Do you know how uh, what week of the month it is? No. It, All right, folks, Wayne doesn't know. So call the library, would you please? Everybody call the library, and you can get a free tutorial at their grace uh, every month. Yeah. How, how to operate a computer. What kind of a computer did they have? I don't know what the brand was. It was, was it a Dell? I, not, I, I honestly can't tell you, Glendora. All right, I'll stop. Tell me what you know, and then we'll go on to something else. Okay, uh, to tell what I know, I won't be telling very much, I'm afraid. But, um, you know, the instructor is very uh, knowledgeable and very helpful. And, of course, at the Athenaeum, if you use one of their computers, they're always there to help you from the reference department if you run into trouble. Well, thank you very much. Wayne, what was uh, Pittsfield like in the 1950s, downtown Pittsfield? Well, it was very different from the way it is today. And I've mentioned in one of your other programs how we had the dime stores, the five and dime, Newberry's, Woolworth's, Grant's, uh, Grand Silver, Kresge's, and they're all gone now. And I saw changes take place. They closed one by one over the years. But Newberry's used to have a man who was a shoemaker down in the lower level. And they used to have a, a lunch counter on the right-hand side that you could enter. And they had a popcorn machine where you could go in and buy a bag of popcorn. And they used to, in the 50s, each department.
compartment was separate. In other words, a woman would be standing in the middle of a, a like a circular counter, and you would pay for your purchase at that counter, and you, whatever you bought would be put in a small paper bag. So you might be carrying out four or five different bags from one store. What fun. Yes. And um, we had a big department store, Elon Brothers, and I believe it had five stories. I was thinking four, but I believe it was five. And they had elevators. They would hire elevator operators. And they sold all kinds of different things there. You, know, you could buy cosmetics. They had a book section. They had a section upstairs. Where? At England Brothers Department. Oh, at England Brothers Department Store. Yes. And that's gone now. It's a bank building there now. And we had clothing stores. You had Bessie Clark's and Rosenfeld's and Sukles. And Did you have a Kresge's? Yes, we had a Kresge's store. And Did you have Woolworth? Yes. And when you bought piano sheet music, what was that like? Well, I buy that either at Sammy Vincent's store or up at the other end of North Street at the upper end at Wood Brothers. And Wood Brothers is still in existence, not on North Street. It's over at the Allendale Shopping Center in Coltsville. What was that you told me that if you went in, a pianist would play the music for you to see if you wanted to buy the sheet music? Oh, that was before my time. But my one of my aunts worked in France, and they did have a woman uh, in the music department, and she had a piano, and she would play a, a piece for you if you wanted to see how it went. And I mentioned how before the store opened, the employees would gather around the piano and they would sing. Nice. Tell me about the lunch counters. The lunch counter, there was one, I mentioned the one in Newberry's, and there was one in Woolworth's at one time. It was over on the left-hand side. And I don't remember there being any lunch counter in the other. And it could, could cost less than a dollar? Oh, yeah. Yes. You could buy a, a meal, a hot meal, for 75 cents in Woolworths. And wow. in the early 60s, that's, that was the price, 75 cents. Wow. And we had several nice uh, restaurants up on North Street. They weren't these four or five-star restaurants, but they were um, smaller restaurants where you could go in and buy a meal that was adequate and nutritious for a reasonable price. We had Rosa's where you could go in, the Rosa restaurant, specialized in Italian foods. There was one called The Hub. And we had several of these smaller restaurants down on West Street. At one time, Johnny's Restaurant was there. I don't know if that was in the 50s. It was there in the 60s. We had the Berkshire Restaurant down there. And of course, the Busy Bee was well known in Pittsfield. And they had wonderful spaghetti there. Did practically everybody work at General Electric? Yes. And on Thursday night, when, when they got paid, they got their paychecks on Thursday from General Electric, and North Street would be bustling with activity. Yes, right, right. And, and when, uh, what was General Man? What was Gen General Electric manufacturing in Pittsfield? Well, they did defense work for one thing. That was very important. They did what defense work? Defense work. But I'm talking about 1950. Electrical appliances too, uh -huh. and um, there was one section that was chemical, and um, there was they they would make transformers and all sorts of things. Uh -huh. There was um, one section that was called glass pushings. What glass pushings? And I glass am, pushings. I imagine that was to make. Um, Probably, um, what would it be that they would use? I don't want to say fuses, but... Wires and the telephone poles, string wires around the telephone poles? Probably uh, used for things like that. I know that it did... One of my mother's friends worked in something at one time called glass pushing. Okay, Wayne. Anything else you want to tell us about downtown Pittsfield? Well, downtown Pittsfield really was the only major place you could shop until the 
shopping centers came along and the larger stores on the outskirts. Yep. In the fall of 1955, the Allendale Shopping Center was the first shopping center. Oh, yeah. Around here. And, of course, there they had a very, there's a very large parking lot, and you could park as long as you wanted. You didn't sure. have to uh, Oh, sure, sure. Meters. And that was what the meters took in the 1950s. It was pennies. And you put the penny in and crank the time on a meter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had stores where the women would shop, too, for clothing, holes and stones, and the textile shop. And there were so many different stores up on North Street. It's been sad to see it. Um, so many of the stores die out. We still have one nice clothing store up there, Stephen Valenti's. Okay. Uh, Wayne, can you tell us a joke? Tell you a joke. Well, I like the joke about the stockbroker who had mistletoe over his door of his office. He was asked why, and he said that's so the clients can kiss their money goodbye when they come in. And about the stockbroker who said you'd be surprised how many people come to my office in a limousine with a chauffeur to get advice to a guy who comes to work on the subway. <laughs> and then what else? Uh, uh, the stockbroker. Anything else? Um... Let's see. Oh, yeah, this the um, Wall Street magnate came home and his neighbors said, what's the latest dope on uh, Wall Street? And the magnate from the Wall Street said, our son Irving, he just went to work for us. <laughs> Let's see, there was another one, too. Uh, Oh, yeah, the stockbroker. The man says, I buy sweet chariot stocks. Do you know what those are, Wayne? Oh, what are those? Uh, as soon as you buy them, they swing low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd like to have you tell a story about the little old man and the little old woman who were summoned to court. Oh, yes. The little old lady was brought before the judge, and the judge said to her, you were arrested for stealing a can of peaches. And she said, yes, Your Honor. And he said, how many peaches were in that can? And she said, six, Your Honor. And he said, well, I'm going to sentence you to six days in jail, one day for each peach. And the little old man standing beside her, who obviously was her husband, said, may I speak, Your Honor? The judge said, be brief. And the little old man said, she also stole a can of peas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Phil, are you around? Yes. No, you're not. You're a square. <laughs> uh, Phil, would you kindly uh, turn off the camera while we see what we want to do next? Yes, I will. Wayne, the Pittsfield High School just had a wonderful reunion. Tell us about it. Yes, we did. That was for the class of 1965. We had wanted to have a 55th class reunion two years ago, but... It turned out because of the pandemic that we were unable to do so. So we called it a 75th birthday party. And we had 80 people attend. 80? Wow. Well, this included husbands and wives. But we had in our graduating class 768. Well, that is a big class. It was. And we didn't have double sessions. So we had over 2,000 students in the school. And... Everyone who went seemed to have, to have a good time. And I got up and made a, a little speech about how when we were growing up in Pittsfield, there were certain radio personalities and television personalities who were part of our lives. And I mentioned Uncle Jim Fisk on Freddie Fryhofer. And then I mentioned Bronco Bill. And I mentioned one of the uh, DJs from WPTR, Boom Boom Brannigan. And then I said, maybe you watch Glendora when she was on SS Glendora or in her spaceship on Satellite 6. And I'd be getting these murmurings from people, yes, they remembered. And I mentioned that I had spoken with you just recently. Yes, partially and, every day. Yes, that you wanted to send your congratulations and greetings to the class. And you wanted to say hello to all your little buddies from your WRGB days. Yes. And... Um, I mentioned that a couple of your old fans had contacted you recently. Tell the people how many years ago you had this reunion, and this year 
2012. And what year are you talking about to the people? So, do you mean the year that your program was on? 1955. Yes. And how many years is that? 68? 67. And at 55 would be um, 2022. So it's, it's coming up to 68 years. This is and how old are you people? About 74? 75. We have some who are 76. Yeah. And, um, and where did you have your party? The party? Well, we had a meet and greet the night before. Where? At the GEAA Clubhouse on Crane Avenue. And then we had our actual luncheon reunion the next day on Saturday at the Country Club, the Teal Country Club on South Street. Oh, isn't that lovely? And I told the people that you're still on television. Yeah. I mentioned 72 stations from Boston to San Diego, and I could tell they were amazed. Yeah. And I told them that you were, you thought it was wonderful we'd attain the age of 75, but I didn't know why you thought it was such a big accomplishment since you're 94. <laughs> <laughs> 94, no doctors, no medicine and vegan? Yes, that's yeah. right. Well, that's a very good account, Wayne. I enjoyed my visit with you and living the old days of Pittsfield when it was such a charming little city. Oh, thank you. Yes. You take care. Uh, let's see, can you give us one more joke? One more joke? Well, I like the sign in the coffee shop window that said, don't make fun of our coffee, you'll be old and weak someday. Yes. And there was another sign in the coffee that said, uh, coffee shop that said, blended coffee, uh, customer, what's it a blend of? Waitress, yesterday and today's. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, my dear love. Do as well. Bye-bye. Oh, bye. Wayne, I thought I could let you go rest, but Phil, Eddie, my helper, has another very interesting question. Loudly, Phil, what is it? Well... I'm from this area, Albany area, and I don't know too much about Fitzfield. The only times that I've been there really were to travel through it on the way to Mount Greylock, which is a beautiful mountain, or to visit family in Massachusetts. But I've been listening to you and Glendora talk about how great Pittsfield has been, and what does it have to offer now for people who might be interested in taking a trip over? Good question. Go forward, Wayne. Yes, we have the Berkshire Museum on South Street, and... Uh that uh, has a collection of art on the second floor and the uh, natural history and scientific exhibits on the first floor. One of the popular exhibits at the Berkshire Museum is the mummy on the second floor. Ooh. Mummies? Mummy, yeah, they have a real one. Oh. They do? Tell Phil about it. Oh, yes, it was a young man who was mummified, and I know at one point they brought him to Berkshire Medical Center and they x-rayed the mummy because, of course, it's all wrapped up and cased, but they've had that as part of their display for a number of years. And uh, what else, Wayne, is the big attraction over there? Well, we have the uh, local history room at the uh, Berkshire Anthony M. the library, which has to do with authors who were prominent in Berkshire County. And, um, and do you know some of those? Well, one I mentioned, and they have his books, is Jim Shulman. And you know him. Yes, yeah. And, you know, there'd be Herman Melville. Herman Melville? And uh, we have Arrowhead down on South Street where uh, Herman Melville did actually did some of his writing. That was his home. Well, I think you're all missing one of the biggest ones. What about Tanglewood? Yes, Tanglewood is in Lenox. Well, yeah, but sort of Pittsfield attraction, that's, isn't it? Oh, yes, that certainly is a Berkshire County attraction. And then there's the Mount down in Lenox. Um, Phil, have you ever been to Tanglewood? Oh, yes. Phil, it I'm sounds, asking. It sounds like a mess to tangle. What is it? <laughs> the Boston Symphony. Oh. Yes. Uh, the, is it only the Boston Symphony or is it the Boston Pops? Or? They have that, too. There, there's a Boston Pops. And uh, they also have a popular artist series when they have different people come in. What, Wayne? They have a popular artist series when they uh, engage certain oh. popular 
artist to come in and give a concert. Uh, name the last one. I don't know which it was. Yes, it I, was. You went to it, and you were there until midnight trying to get home. Oh, oh, that was the, uh, uh, the John Williams' 90th birthday party. John Williams, does that mean anything to you, Phil? He does the soundtrack for a lot of movies. Yeah. Yes. yes. He wrote. He writes music for the movies. Now, of course, the uh, big attraction is the Berkshires themselves. Yes. Which is part of the Appalachian Mountain. And, and of course, James Taylor does a, a concert there every year. And okay. Anything else, Phil? The Hairpin Turn. Is that near Pittsfield? I remember that very well. It's in no, that's in North Adams. The oh. Hairpin Turn, honey. <laughs> yes, yes, that's in North Adams. Yeah. And we have the educational institutions in Berkshire County. There's the uh, Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, which was North Adams State College. And you have West Stockbridge with Norman Rockwell. Oh, yeah. Yes, the Rockwell Museum down in Stockbridge, Williams College up in Williamstown. Oh, the Red Iron Inn. Yes, that's in Stockbridge. Yeah. Well, I guess we answered that question, didn't we, Phil? Yeah. Thank you. All right. And remember, when all is said and done, the only thing that really matters is how did you treat others. Phil, how much time do we have left? You have about one minute. One minute. Okay, I think that we will do a Bible passage. I have one from memory, Wayne. Let's see if you can get one. Mine is all things work for good for those who love the Lord and know his purpose. And we know what his purpose is. When everything is said and done, the only thing that really matters is how did you treat others. Wayne, have you got a Bible passage from memory? Yes, uh, be kind one to another. It's from the, or I believe it's the sixth book of Ephesians. That's a pretty short one, Wayne. Well, oh, there's more to it. Be kind one to another, tender hearting, forgiving, as Christ has forgiven you. Oh, that's nice. And now I think we'll, we can sing a hymn. Let me think what one we want to sing. Maybe one that takes about 20 seconds? Pardon me, honey? Maybe one that takes about 20 seconds? <laughs> uh, no, I can go over a little bit. Crown him with many crowns, the Lord upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly angels drown. All music but their own. Awake my soul and sing. Of him who died for thee, and crown him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Wayne, you want the last word, dear? Well, the last word is to tell everyone to have a good day. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Thank you. That's a beautiful fill. Anything to say before we go? Remember to do a good deed for someone else today and pass it on. Nice. Grace and peace, everybody, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.